Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. And as you can see here, we're finishing up with this Porsche engine. And you can see I've got everything now sat on the top. I've had to take out the start motor purely because obviously I've got an automatic. I've got to connect it back up and then I've got to connect the drive plate to the actual torque converter itself, which means I have to do the bolts, which means I have to leave the starter motor out so I can't put the plenum on as yet until I do that. You can see here we've got all the uh, purge valve on. We've got all the lines on ready to go. This is how you do it. I know there's not many people that actually show you the way they go. You can see all the lines here. It's very, very easy. When you take them off, you can't get them mixed up because of this angle here, which sits like this. And also the purge valve's got a connector that sits on top of the scavenger pump right here, which aligns everything for you anyway. Obviously you've got your hose that goes into the oil cooler, there's only one. Then you've got one that comes into the coolant pipe just here um, for the excess uh, pressure. And then you've got all these that go into the engine once the engine's back in the car. If you can see, everything's in order. The next thing we'll be putting on is the gearbox, then the intake plenum, then the injectors, then we'll be getting this engine back into the car um, straight away. That's the last things we've got to do. Not long, I'm just waiting for an engine crane to arrive to be able to lift this off here, pull it on my trolley and then put the gearbox into, into situ with the engine so I can connect it all up and get it back into the car. If you can see here as well, I've now got all the new exhausts on. You can see here, this is all the new stainless steel exhausts that I've got on the car ready. I've also got the stainless steel headers. We've got the sport headers on here as well. Like I said, just the exhaust alone and the headers, that's two and a half grand. You gotta think this is a Dankst exhaust system and these are, I believe, Design Tech headers. These are the only ones I could actually find for this car. So these are brand new Design Tech headers on here as well. Everything goes together, the Dankst exhaust, obviously it will be completed once we get it on the car. Can't put the tailpipes on yet. Can't put anything on, I can't put the other cats on, the secondary cats on, because otherwise it won't pass the bumper when I go to put it in the car. So they will go on once the engine's back in the car and I bolted everything up. The same way I got them out, I took the cats out first um, and then lowered the rest of the engine. I know the back boxes will pass no problem, but the pre-cats, the secondary cats, sorry, will not pass the rear bumper and I don't want to take that off. So I'm not going to be doing that. Like I say, there isn't much left to go. I'm still waiting on longer bolts for these ignition coils because the person that had this previously obviously put shorter bolts because they had the shorter ignition coils. They had these benchmark performance ignition coils, which I just bin them. Uh, they're very, very expensive, but I just didn't care. I threw them away. A lot of people think I'm crazy. The guy that's rebuilding this with me, a good friend of mine, he thinks I'm absolutely gone insane um, on this engine rebuild. And that's one of the reasons why he wants to buy it because you don't see many people putting this much money into a car. Like I said to many of you guys before, if you to take this to Hartec or anybody like that, all you're gonna get is an engine rebuild. Do remember that. That's not your coolant lines. That's not your control lines. That's not your um, uh, brake pipes. That's nothing. That's nothing. These have all been upgraded to good ridge brake hoses brake lines all round, all the corn hoses, all the control arms. I've done a full engine rebuild. You know, the money, Hartec charge for an engine rebuild. You know, I've gone and bought all new exhausts and everything for this car. I've replaced all the corn hoses. You can see here, everything's new, even new one going to the reservoir as well. That replaced, I'm still waiting on one that goes to the front console as well. That goes back to one of the crossover pipes inside the engine bay. You know, I'm still buying parts as the list goes on. Like I said, I'm waiting for all, for 12 bolts for all these ignition coils because I need the longer ones. Because as I said, the guy had the shorter ones and they just don't fit these ignition coils. But you can see I put a lot of money into this car, into this engine. Um, many people say, you know, you've got to be successful to own a Porsche and to be able to rebuild one, especially the way I've done it. Many people, you know, I've had many people messaging me, asking me if I can rebuild their 997. When I tell them everything's gonna break when it comes off, replace this, replace that, they don't wanna know. They only wanna get the bore score repaired. It's impossible to do that on these cars. Things rust, things corrode due to the heat. You've got the CCV pipes that become brittle, snap. That's like 600 pounds just alone. People don't uh, even think it through properly when they're thinking of rebuilding it. They're just thinking that you could, you'll get away with being able to do the bore score and put everything back together. I'm not like that. I'm very, very OCD. I know people don't wanna put that type of money into cars. I get that, a lot of people don't have that type of money. Um, but in the same sense, realistically, you shouldn't be really owning this car if you haven't got that money to really invest it, because obviously these 997s 
are gonna need repairing. I know a lot of people who buy these are not mechanically minded, hence why there's many of you that are watching me rebuild this car because you wanted to learn how to do it yourself because obviously it ain't a very straightforward process. Obviously I built this engine up from the ground up. Um, Nathan obviously was meant to help me, but the reason he didn't, and I'll be very, very honest with you, is purely because he wanted to slap, damn, dash everything back together. I'm very, very OCD, me and him, I've got different ways of how we build stuff and how we do things. If it was down to him, he would have reused my old exhaust. He was already moaning that I scrapped them. I just gave them away, I didn't give a crap. I just literally gave the old exhaust. Everyone was telling me that's an original sport exhaust from Porsche. Why would I throw that exhaust away? But I just didn't want it. I didn't care for it. I wasn't buying new ones anyway. I literally just gave them to the scrap man with no care in the world, obviously. Nathan say don't want to, don't believe in putting no money. He was meant to buy new belts, new pulleys, new CCV, new this, new that. And as he said to you on the videos, you have a hundred thousand pound in the engine. Well, like I said to you guys, I'm not going to be making much profit on this. I'm still buying stuff as it stands. That's why the engine's still sitting here. And as I keep going for it, there's more things I need, more things I need, coolant hoses, bolts, bolts for the ignition cores. I'm finding other things that I need. Like I said, I'll be lucky if I make two, maybe three grand profit out of this car in the end of it. And like I said, obviously I'm not putting a price up for the guy that's bought it, purely because I gave him a price. There is nothing I can do. Obviously, once we got this engine back together, we've still got the transmission to service. I've got all the transmission stuff to do that. I've got all the coolant hoses that I've got to replace on the transmission coolant lines as well. So yes, I've got all brand new transmission lines, uh, coolant lines for the transmission. Like I said, it is what it is. And like I said, guys, you know, at the end of the day, look, my good friend Nathan ended up selling his Porsche. He's got literally no cars now at all. He's only got his Sequoia. He doesn't have his Porsche because he's seen how much money has to be put into one of these. And he was petrified that his would bore score and he doesn't have the money to repair that. And he would be out of pocket. So he got rid of his Cayman purely for that reason, because it was a 3.4, the Cayman S. He was worried in case it bore scored, he wasn't driving it much. And then he was gonna have to rebuild it and not be able to sell it and sell it at a loss like he did his last one because he's seen himself what it takes to tear one of these down to rebuild it. Like gaskets alone, just for the whole gasket is 500 pound. You know, a lot of he don't have that type of money to be rebuilding a Porsche. Um, obviously I'm quite fortunate where I have had that money to be able to do that, but people like him don't have that type of money to be rebuilding that. And that's why I know many of you guys who watch me and Nathan, that's what, well why he hasn't been posting because he doesn't have no cars to actually post with. He's only got his Sequoia now and his Figaro. Times have hit really bad for him. Um, and he doesn't have any cars. He doesn't have any BMWs. doesn't have his Porsche. doesn't have nothing. Um, that, me and him are still very cool friends. Like I said, he's going to be coming over here to, to drive this 997. Obviously, when it's done, me and him agreed that when he, I want him to drive it before, obviously, it goes. Because, obviously, he's never drove one. Obviously, you know, he would like to drive it. So that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to get this built. For him, when he comes back over, he can actually enjoy it as well. So I can get the tracking done get everything done so we can actually go abroad with this car before I actually sell it. Cause I need to do the braking period of service before I get rid of it as well, purely because obviously I need to make sure everything's fine. There's no leaks, the engine's gonna be fine. Even though I know it's fine, everything's timed correctly, everything's talked correctly, but you just never know. But yes, guys, you know, like I said, Nathan has fallen in hard times. Bless him, let's hope uh, something happens with him, you know, something goes good for him. But you know, at the end of the day it is what it is. Um, this is why he got rid of his Cayman, because he's seen what I need to do. And like I say, it's not cheap. Two and a half grand just between the exhaust and the headers. And then you've got all the bolts that need to go of it. You need starter motor, starter lead, PCCV, gaskets, this, pulleys, belts, water pump, thermostat, bits in the engine, this, that, ARP bolts, you know, your bearings, everything you need, piston rings. It adds up very, very quickly and it becomes very expensive. And like I say, I've got everything. I'm quite fortunate. I've got everything. Nothing is holding me back. Starting this engine and getting it back in the car now. I'm just waiting on an engine crane, but I have everything here. They have a coolant hose I'm just waiting for, which is the last one. I've got the gearbox service kit. I've got all the coolant lines. Everything is ready to go back in. I just need to put brake fluid in, bleed out all the system because I've done all the brake lines, all the brake pipes as well. So everything's brand new. They're all stainless steel. Like I said, I just need CHF fluid, top of power steering fluid. And all I need last is to change transmission fluid and then take this for tracking. And that's about it, guys. The rest is all cosmetic, which is window switches, bodywork, all be sorted before it sells, which I've already got someone ready to come to do the bodywork who's gonna do it on the lift. So like I said, guys, this engine is nearly ready to go. And like I said, it isn't cheap at all. Really, really isn't. And like I said, do 
Think about this before you go and buy yourself a 997. Many people seem to believe this is overhyped and this hasn't happened to every single one. But as I'm seeing constant, even on eBay, bore score is very prominent on all these cars from 05 to 06. And people are getting rid of them for 18, 16 grand, even with bore score, hoping you're gonna repair. And you can't do it. You physically can't do it. These cars need about 17, 18 grand just invested in them. I've invested nearly 19,000 now I'm coming up in this car. 19,000 pounds into a car. And that's what I said to you guys. I'm not really making a lot of money on this car, I really ain't. Um, when you think about it, of all the parts I've put. And like I said, I dread to think where, where if there'll be anything else, any bolts that I'm, I've lost that I need to place and things like that, you know? And that's what I mean, guys. Do think about it before getting yourself a 911. It is not cheap by any means. Obviously, this is a one-time overhaul in my life I'll ever do. Um, you guys won't be seeing me overhaul another engine <laughs> like this. I know many of you guys who watch my BMW stuff. Hope I'll be over overhauling one of the BMW ones. Obviously, it's a lot cheaper than this. But it just, like I say, I'm very electrical. My mindset is all to do with the computer side of things, electrical side of things. And this is why me doing mechanical, I can do it. It's not an issue, as many of you guys have seen. I do it day in, day out. I used to do it before in garages. It's just not for me. Um, I can do a lot of th my things a lot easier than getting my hands dirty with a car engine. Um, obviously, if I have to, I will. And this was a car I really wanted. So that's why I put my time and effort into it. But as many of you guys see now, I have bought another BMW. Will I buy another Porsche? Who knows in the future? But not for now. I think my time with Porsches are done, at least for now, after rebuilding this takes a lot of money, a lot of time. The shop it ends up a mess. I've only just started clearing it up, thank God, after everything. But that is it for me at present. But I hope many of you guys are enjoying this build series. You guys get a drift of where everything goes. I'm just really trying to show you brief because a lot of people don't show you everything like all these vacuum lines that run here, where they go. People will just jump to it or fast forwards it and you don't get to see all this. I'll be showing you all the hooks go like this that goes onto the intake plenums and how to hook up everything, all the CCVs, everything like that. So you guys get a drift of where it all goes. So maybe it helps someone um, because you guys can stop the video, watch it, zoom in, do whatever you need to do to see where everything goes. But as I say, guys, I am enjoying this build and I'll be happy once the whole engine is back in the car. My whole floor at the back there now has gone clear. I'm so happy because everything's now on. The amount of time I've had everything on my benches, on my floor, I'm over the absolute moon. Um, Nathan likes to be like that with things everywhere. He likes to look like he's busy and always doing something. That's not for me. I'm a very OCD person with my shop, with everything else. I don't like things everywhere. I was dying to get this engine back ready so I could get everything back on, to get everything out of my shop and clear up my shop. And I'm so happy now I'm trying to put everything back on to get it there so I no longer have to see all this clutter in my shop anymore. Get it back in the car, service the transmission, do the coolant, we've got to do all the fluids. Then you guys will get to hear it start for the first time. Obviously I will do another video, installing the plenum, showing you to change all the injector seals, putting the injectors in. Um, we'll put the uh, secondary cats on as well to connect up here. They run along this bar where you bolt them onto once we get the car in, in the, once we get the engine into the car, sorry. Um, and then we'll move to the next stage, just firing it all up and you guys will get to hear it the first time it starts up. Obviously, for starters, I know many people choose to lube everything. I lubed everything inside on the internals, but I am gonna be taking out the fuel pump switch and I'm gonna be cranking it over for 20 to 30 seconds, letting the oil pump around the engine before I actually start it up. That's purely because that's the way I like to do things. Many people just like to turn it over and hope it starts and, you know, run it dry. Some of the people, they don't even have to have lubed everything. That's not me, fuel pump's gonna be killed. So I know I can crank this over and get the oil lube uh, pumping everywhere before it actually fires into life. Thank you very much for watching guys and I hope you're enjoying this build series. And if you are, do give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you have got a Porsche 907 or thinking of getting one. Thank you very much and goodbye.